Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. In today's video, we're continuing on my series on the third generation Tacoma, where we go from the nose of the truck all the way to the tailpipe. Let's look at what's new, what's good, and what's not so good. In today's video, we're gonna be covering the four wheel drive system, a very important part of this truck because of its off-road capabilities. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, Welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well thank you so much for watching another one of my videos and without further ado, let's get right into it. So the four-wheel drive system in the Tacoma has always been a very robust, very well-functioning system. And actually the Tacoma has very good off-road capabilities. In the new generation, they have changed a lot of things, basically almost the whole system. But in my opinion, they improved a lot on it and fixed some issues that are a little too ancient in the older ones. Even the fifth generation 4Runner in 2021 still has an ancient system. While it works great from the service side of things, things improved drastically with the Tacoma. The first change is the transfer case. It is actually all new to the Tacoma. I mean, you go underneath the truck, if you had a previous generation, you look at them, they look similar, but it's actually an all new transfer case for the third generation Tacoma. And the first notable change you're gonna notice is the actuator on the transfer case. We're gonna get into the operation of the four wheel drive as a review, because we've talked about this and the operation remains very similar. Bear with me here, let's talk about components first. The actuator on the transfer case that makes the shifts happen, it is much smaller because now it has one motor instead of two, it has multiple positions, so it can actually do both shifts that it needs to do without having to need two motors. That's a huge improvement. What is not a huge improvement, which is something that enthusiasts always disliked, you cannot replace this actuator without taking the transfer case out of the truck, disassembling the whole thing because of a tiny little clip. That's, yeah, it's not a good idea. It's not a great thing. Yeah, there are ways to tear into the thing and they're not recommended. So with the transfer case actuator, it's business as usual, thing has to come apart. And uh, the best way is prevention, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Other changes to the system, the front differential, it is changed. However, it is very similar, still has the automatically disconnecting differential, it has the ADD actuator on it. But what is new about it is it has a temperature sensor now to monitor the temperature of the front differential in case you get a little too happy off-roading. It will actually warn you that the front differential is too hot. Now, the rear end of the truck, somewhat similar to the previous generation, not much have changed there. The models that have a rear locking diff just has a little actuator that locks the differential. Nothing is very unique there. But the most major change is in the electronic side, believe it or not, to the better, not to the worst. If you've owned previous generation Tacoma, when things go south with the four-wheel drive system, diagnosis is short of a nightmare. It is a nightmare. You have to measure voltages and it takes forever. It's super confusing because the computer does not talk. It just does what it's supposed to do and we can't do it. It just freaks out and flashes the light at you and that's the end of that. The new Tacoma has a four-wheel drive computer that talks. It has trouble codes, folks. You could read codes, see what's going on, so you can focus your diagnosis on the area of trouble, not start checking everything and start looking at all these voltages. Folks, this is a huge deal for diagnosis. But just like with the previous system, you actually don't need to worry about diagnosis if you do the following, and it's actually in the owner's manual. Every month, you need to actuate the system in all positions. Put it in four-wheel drive, put it in four-low. Don't drive it far in four-low. Just basically shift it into four-low and shift it out of four-low. But four-wheel drive high, you can actually shift it up to 60 miles an hour 
driving. You, need, you can't do that on dry pavement, but you can do it on dry pavement if you're driving straight, not making turns for a short period of time and then switch it out. Do that rehearsal, if you would, every month. You'll actually never have to deal with treble codes, problems, because most of the problems with this four-wheel drive system is when the owner haven't used it in four years and all of a sudden, let's use it. Everything is seized, of course, just like the old trucks. This is usually what caused them to seize. Having said that, let's review the four-wheel drive operation of the Tacoma. This Tacoma only has a switch on the dash, which is super simple in my opinion. The wording on the switch have changed from the previous generation. It doesn't say too high, four high, four low. No, it just says two-wheel drive, four high, four low. That's it. It keeps it very simple because the, the emphasis was on two-wheel drive because many people thought two, H2 was actually four-wheel drive in a different mode and it was very confusing. Just make keep life simple and life becomes good. Having said that, the way this four-wheel drive operates and in order for us to understand how it operates, we need to go back to the olden days. There is a differential in the front and there is a transfer case in the middle and then there is a rear differential. When you're in two-wheel drive, very simple, power goes to the rear wheels, we're driving, life is good. When you're in two-wheel drive, the front wheels are going to spin that front differential, which is going to spin the front prop shaft, which is all wasted energy for nothing. So in the olden days, and I don't know if you remember this, old four-wheel drive trucks used to have to manually lock or unlock the hub to engage the front differential or disengage it. Toyota trucks for the longest time, except the very old ones, of course, have something called an ADD actuator. It is a small actuator on the front differential that just does that exactly. It disconnects and connects the front wheels to the differential. Beautiful thing. It just is electronic. It has a sleeve that engages and disengages it. So when you're not in four wheel drive, the front wheels can spin. They will spin the axle, but they will actually not spin the differential internally and not spin the front prop shaft. Life is good. When you engage four-wheel drive, here's the sequence of events. The ADD will lock first, engaging the front prop shaft. Then the actuator in the transfer case will switch from two-wheel drive to four high. The reason we say high is it's not low range, there's no reduction. When that all this mess happens, and the way the computer watches this, there's all these little limit switches, position switches, that it can watch the whole operation happen in the sequence. Where is this motor at? Where is this actuator at? Where are, where are they doing? What's going on? When it achieves that shift, that light comes on solid and life's good. While it's doing that, it's flashing. When you wanna go in four low, we're already in four wheel drive. You can't go from two wheel drive to four low immediately. It actually has to do four high and then four low. In four low, the motor inside the transfer case only will move, engaging the reduction. And now we are in four low. When we go back, everything sequences back the same way. So this operation theory or the way everything works is exactly the same for a very long time because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But when it did broke in the olden days, computer didn't talk and it was a nightmare to diagnose these things sometimes. So addition of trouble codes is very welcome. One notable thing about this four wheel drive system, which is significant in my opinion, is how smooth it operates. The, because the computer has been updated, the operation is a lot quicker, it's a lot smoother, Everything is kind of at a higher speed. So when you engage this truck in four wheel drive, it is very smooth. I mean, in the olden days, you used to hear a clunk and as the ADD engages, there's a clunk. As the actuator in the transfer case engages, there's a clunk. That was typical and that was just like, I can hear the truck working. Well, Tacoma, you ain't gonna hear it. You're gonna hear a few clicks, very soft clicks from the computer. Well, voila, it's engaged. Unless you're parked, upside down with the wheel locked and you're crawling at very low speed, then you're going to feel it and hear it. But otherwise, it's pretty smooth operation and very impressive. And 
Some folks will say, well, I don't want this button. I want the manual shifter like the fifth generation 4Runner. Yeah, it would have been nice, but it would have been for show only because this system is actually very reliable so far. We haven't really seen issues unless you forget to actuate it every once in a while. Now, let's talk about one last thing, the crawl control or the off-road cruise control. We're gonna to touch briefly on the crawl because it's actually, believe it or not, even though it's 100% exclusive to four-wheel drive and off-roading, it is actually part of the brake system. It's not even part of the four-wheel drive at all. Yes, they communicate back and forth, but it's part of the brake system. All the crawl control does is it kinda does a, cru a cruise control when you're off-roading. Controls the brake, controls the throttle, keeps you at a steady speed, so you can only focus on steering. And it, it is really helpful and works really good. Fifth generation Ford Runner also have it. On the Tacoma, it is limited to very few models, and actually the TRD Pro one. You're not gonna find it, this truck behind me doesn't have it. It has a different system, which we're gonna get in more depth about it in the brake video of this series. However, the crawl system, I just wanna say this 100% so you're aware of this. Other than the changes, the drastic changes in the brake system to accommodate this feature, it's all software in the end. There's no moving parts with the crawl. It's basically gonna control the throttle, which is electronic. So we're just gonna communicate with the engine computer and the brakes, which is already there. The crawl control lives in the brake system. So there is no moving part other than the changes to the brake system, which we're gonna cover in the coming part of the series about brakes. Having said that, let's go check out the four wheel drive and I'll give you some tips and tricks about activating it as we drive the Tacoma. The four wheel drive is a part time. There is no full time all -wheel, four wheel drive in this truck. You can engage and I encourage you to, just like we said, I encourage you to practice or rehearse the four wheel drive every month or so. You're on your drive home below 60 miles an hour. Like right now, I'm just under 50 miles an hour. Just flip the switch. Let it engage four wheel drive. We are on dry pavement right now. We're not making turns, we're going straight. We're on four wheel drive. Switch it back to two wheel drive. Now, don't go to low range, but then you're driving again. Same straight road at a constant speed. Switch it again two, three times. And, and you notice there's no lever, there's nothing. This is not like the Forerunner. It just has a good old button, super simple. Just make sure you're below 60 miles an hour and Practice it. Let these actuators that have been idling for the past month, let them switch back and forth, move so nothing seizes, life is good. And honestly, other than this, you're not gonna have much problems with these, with the four-wheel drive system in the Tacoma. They're just that solid and it's true. Well, there you have it, folks. That about wraps it up for the four-wheel drive section of this series. In the next part of this series, we're gonna be covering the brakes and the suspension, including the crawl control stuff. If you like this series so far, consider giving it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not a subscriber. If you haven't caught up to the previous parts of this series, I will leave them in the description of this video alongside some helpful videos if you own a third generation Tacoma or you're considering buying one. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day.